If conditions never changed, fish would never need to move. You could pull up to your favorite fishing spots, make a few casts, and expect fish to bite on cue. But that's not how things work in the real world. Nature tosses a relentless procession of changing conditions at fish, forcing them to adapt and move to better locations for spawning, feeding, or survival. And as new opportunities develop, existing fishing patterns falter and new ones emerge. Today, on the edge, we're in pursuit of roving smallmouth bass as they disperse from spawning areas, swimming lazily across the adjacent flats. Weed, wood, or rock cover briefly attracts high-riding bass, one here, two there, during this nomadic transition from spring to summer. The key is to keep moving, fan casting in all directions to contact small pockets of activity amidst vast areas of fishless water. Bass can be fussy at this time, often ignoring loud, aggressive, fast-moving presentations. As a general rule, subtle lures and swimming retrieves best match the depth and mood of post-spawn smallies on the move. Smallmouth, just after the spawn, don't have to be hard fish to catch. You just need to find the spot on the spot, slow down, finesse them, and horses come in the boat. Cool. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There you go, that's a nice fish, Dan. Oop, there we go. That's not a rock bass, I don't think, No, Dan. that's not a rock at all. You want me to grab the net for that one? Sure. <laughs> that's so much fun, Hunter. Never gets old, does it? No, it doesn't. You ready to go? There it is. All right. Boy, they are fun, aren't they? They're awesome. Who awesome. doesn't like, who doesn't like a small mouth? Oh yeah, that's oh, a, I gotta get him. Oh, oh, Jerry, the he net jumped man. jumped right out of it. That's a big fish, man. That's a beauty. Small mouth. Whoa, whoa, easy thunder. Look at that, dude. That is fun fishing, man. Oh my gosh. Pop that hook out of there quick. Yeah. Oh, those little spin shot hooks are just deadly. Hated. Perfect. There's your fish, dude. Look at that big bruiser smallmouth. They are so, so much fun. Jeremy and I love catching smallmouth. I think everybody at the office loves catching smallmouth like this. And there's a reason why. I think that they bite on pretty much everything in your tackle box. That's what makes them so enjoyable to catch. Look at the size of that big tank. Dan said the cool thing about smallmouth is you can catch them on just about anything in your tackle box, and that's true. But at the same time, they can be very finicky. And right now, we're fishing in what you'd call the post-spawn period. There's, there's still a few fish hanging out in the shallows, but we're in that transition time when they're, they're getting done with the spawn. And this is one of those times, if you're a smallmouth fisherman, you know this can be a very challenging time period for catching bass. A lot of times they're scattered, they're not willing to bite big, fast-moving baits. It's a real finesse game at this time of year. So Dan and I are gonna go through the program that we do to catch small mouse in the post-spawn period. Just drag it over some nice rocks. <laughs> For years, they've quietly taken you where the fish are, but now the silence is about to break. With the incredible new iPilot Link, your Minn Kota and Hummingbird can communicate with each other, so you can hold on a spot like an electronic anchor, record and return to waypoints and paths, follow any Lake Master depth contour, and more, all automatically and all from your Hummingbird or the Link remote. They talk, and you'll be speechless. Hey, you remember when we were hanging out last night? You know, me, you, Gail. That's my girl. You guys are awesome. And then you went to bed. I was tired. You were super tired. And then it was just me and Gail. Mm-hmm. Alone. Ah! 
What? Oh, oh, yeah! It's all in the pause. New Shadow Rep from Rapala. They say that if you turn your passion into your career, you'll never work another day in your life. At Lund, we've turned that passion into building boats for anglers who demand superior fishability, performance, and industry-leading innovation. From our dealers, to our veteran pro staff, to our employees, the Lund family puts their hearts and souls into delivering the ultimate fishing boat that we ourselves are proud to own. That's not a job, that's a lifestyle. Fishermen who swear by it. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. <laughs> He's coming up. They're coming at me. It felt big when I set the hook. I got a goo ball. The fish really seem to be in loose schools, is what I would say right now. It's not like it's not like in that pre-spawn period where you're going to come out here, you're going to hit a spot, and you're going to crack. You want me to net them? Fifth, no, I'll just grab them. Okay. You know, dozen bass on a on a little spot like this. It's it's one here, it's one there. But if you do get bit, there's probably a few fish in that area. They're not tightly grouped but they're in the area, and right now it's about fishing pretty darn slow. That tube was just sitting on the bottom. Of Not a bad bass at all. They're starting to recover a little bit. They don't, don't have the ratty fins anymore, but very, very nice fish. So as the, you know, as the season progresses with, with smallmouth, what you'll see is, is early on, right after ice out, you know, you get a really hot pre-spawn bite. Those fish start pushing up on some sharper, sharper breaks or some depressions up on the flats where you've got big boulders with sand and gravel mixed in. They'll spawn around those big boulders and then from there, you'll start to see those fish transition off of those shallow flats onto that first roll pretty much. So we're really targeting in this particular area, north central Minnesota, that six to eight foot of water. That's where it makes that first roll. It's the end of those big rocks on that flat. You'll start to see some weed developing in those same areas, and that's where we're finding smallmouth. And again, it's not big schools. You gotta pick a structure that's got the right cover, and you gotta fish it slow. Pick the best spots on that structure and work them over really good, because it would take you forever to go through these big flats and drag bait, so pick the spot on the spot on those big, big structures. That brings us to an important point. You know, the seasonal progression of big lakes versus small lakes is, is dramatically different. I think about it like this. I think about big lakes are kind of like a train getting moving down the tracks. It takes a while for them to get started. Small lakes are like race cars. They can take off and uh, get moving seasonally a lot faster. One of the beauties of the area that we live in is the variety that we've got with the number of lakes. Now, right up the road here, we've got some really big bodies of water, and those fish are right on the spawn. So, if we wanted to go bed fishing, we could certainly do that. That's not necessarily our thing. So, we chose a smaller lake today where the fish are further progressed. There may be a week or two ahead of the fish on those bigger lakes. So, that provides us with a post-spawn opportunity. Now, earlier in the season, we might have come here and said, you know, look, we showed up and there's fish on beds. We could go to those big bodies of water and pound on fish that were pre-spawned. So choosing the lake based on the type, the size of the body of water, the clarity, the depth, Oop. can provide you different fishing <laughs> opportunities <laughs> depending on what's going on. Yeah. That's a nice one, huh, Dan? Yeah, it's a beauty. Is that a netter? No, I don't know. No, I'll just kind of, I'll hand jive this guy. Another nice one. Yep. Real nice Didn't fish. mean to interrupt you in your, in your deal, but... Hey, that some, just goes to prove the point. Yep. Yeah, so that's nice. You got the variety of lakes, and you can be fishing pre-spawn, spawn, or post-spawn, depending on the lake, you know? 
That's it. Pick your pick your battles. Boy, that's just so tough. What bait was that on, Dan? This was on a drop shot. A go-to, go-to, go-to finesse presentation anytime. We've made our name helping anglers unlock the water's hidden secrets. Hit the switch. It's time to reveal even more. Auto Chart Live gives you the power to build your own high definition maps anywhere in the world in real time. Because when you know the unknown, you can do the unheard of. Auto Chart Live, only with Onyx, only from Humminbird. There's no place like this. When you're in the business of teaching people how to catch fish, you need to provide anglers with the finest equipment backed with the knowledge of how to use it. It's all about blending science and technology with hardcore fishing experience and passion. It's a relentless commitment to quality. Because it's family, it's personal, and it's all about catching more and bigger fish. There's a real boy there. We're always looking for a secret to success, like lures, lakes, spots. Here's one mechanics have been using for decades to solve fuel system problems. It's Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam helps do the few important things exceptionally well. Removes harmful engine deposits, controls moisture, stabilizes fuel for up to two years, and adds lubrication to fuel, so engines run cooler and last longer. To me, this stuff is like a miracle in a can. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Come here. Oh, they're just kicking up crawdaddies. Look at that. Beautiful smallmouth on that little spin shot. Pop that dude out of there. And that beautiful smallmouth. That is fun fishing. Everybody loves, well, not every, I don't, if they don't love smallmouth fishing, they got to try it because they will love it. He's got another one. Bye bye, baby. Okay, structure versus cover. We're going to go over this again. I'm sure some people know this, but structure is the shape of a particular feature on a lake, like a, a sunken island, uh, a point, an inside corner. Cover is what's on those structures. It could be weed, it could be wood, it could be rocks, depending on the body of water that you're on. Smallmouth are one of the most adaptable species of fish. They will eat just about anything and can live just about anywhere. For our discussion today, I wanna to break cover options down in two ways. One, natural lakes, big or small, and two, rivers and reservoirs, big or small. Okay, on natural lakes like we're on today, hard bottom areas like boulders are key all year long. For the most part, the bigger the better. Now some of these lakes have massive weed beds and smallies like to get in them sometimes. Some key elements to look for are hard bottom areas adjacent to or in the weeds. These clumps of boulders inside giant weed beds are high percentage spots they will produce year after year. Another thing to note, you can come up and catch a big fish off a spot like this, leave for a few hours, come back, and another big fish will be sitting on it, like king of the hill. It's like these spots reload with fish. Each lake is individual and has different weed types and density, not to mention the growth differs from year to year. Smallies can live in just about any type of soft cover, reeds, cabbage, coontail, etc. Your trick is to weed them out. One thing to keep in mind is on any particular body of water, smallmouth can get into one weed type very heavy, which makes it a pattern and finding a pattern is half the battle. Now let's talk about rivers and reservoirs. 
this is an interesting topic because you've got rock, weeds, wood, standing or downed, and you also have the X factor, current. Now you're probably saying, Dan, that covers everywhere. How do you fish all of that? Well, it may be easier than you think. Here is a simple rule of thumb. Sample all the cover types, and whichever one you catch a fish on, fish more of that. Smallmouth are very predictable in these environments. Some days they'll all be on wood, and on other days they'll all be on weeds. Another day they'll all be on rock. You gotta be flexible, roll with the punches, and stay tuned in to whatever cover type the fish are coming off of, and a pattern will emerge. That's cool. <laughs> Midsummer river fishing's all about excitement. So when we come out looking for smallmouth bass in the spring to early summer, what we're looking for primarily is flats. We're looking for a lot of that water that's in that four to six foot range, maybe three to six foot. That's where a lot of the spawning is going to take place. But now in this post-spawn period, we really want to focus on those rocks that are on that, on that first break. So one of the tools that we use, of course, is our fish finder, our hummingbird fish finder. And to find the spots, you use your map with your Lake Master card in it. And of course, that will show you the primary structures that are on the lake that look like good fish holding spots. You can see I've got this set up to six feet here in red. So all those big flats are showcased. They just stick out for me. And this looks like a likely spot, big main, main lake point, but I want to see if there's cover on it. The fish are right now relating to rock, big boulders on those lips, on those first rolls. So the next tool I'll use on this, I'm going to roll right up here, and I'm just going to give it a drive with the side imaging. White stuff. It's all hard bottom. Here we go. Look at these big boulders. Yeah, out on the tip of this point. Yeah, that's right what you're looking for. Point. That's it right there. That's the kind of stuff we want to see right there. Talk about cool technology. <laughs> Look at that. That is sweet, isn't it? It is sweet. Yeah, so I'm a lifelong cable drive user, and I have really come to fall in love with fishing a lot more of the Altera and Tarova. If you're doing, if you're fishing a lot of shallow cover and you're flipping and you're pitching and doing a lot of target casting, there's, you know, there's certainly a need for a Fortrex or a Maxim, but when you're fishing offshore, if you do a lot of musky fishing, smallmouth fishing, walleye fishing, crappie fishing later in the year, this thing does more than you can even believe. Spot lock, record a track, follow the contour. It does so many things and it's automated. You don't have to worry about it. It's great. That thing must, here's another one, must have been going the opposite direction when he uh, hit it because I set the hook and I thought I had an eight pounder. Oh, let's see here. That's a nice one. Net man. Nice one. Nice one. I like being the net man. Smooth, quiet power you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. Uncompromising. Like the fishermen. Swear by it. He's fished here for decades. He knows every hump, every drop off, every contour. He's dedicated his entire life to understanding this single body of water. And he didn't know squat about it until two hours ago. AutoChart Live lets you build your own high definition maps anywhere in the world in real time. 
Only with Onyx. Only from Humminbird. Mercury engine tap. Easy to maintain performance you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Oh, Mr. Brown Bass wants to go for a wants to go for a ride in the air. There we go. Oh, sweet. Perfect. Whoa. That one fell on what any smallmouth fisherman would certainly have in their tackle box, and that's a tube jig. In this post-spawn period, I would have to say is that time of year when you're gonna be fishing a lot of plastics. This is when we do most of our soft plastics fishing. It's finesse and nothing beats plastics when it comes to finesse fishing. So check that baby out and we're gonna share with you some of the rigs that we've got tied up on the deck of the boat right now for catching big brown bass. Get this guy back. Pretty brown bass. We always load for bear when it comes to tackling rigs. But let's go through a simple grocery list of must-haves if you're gonna go out and chase smallmouth in the post-bond period. Today, Jeremy's fishing with the go-to bait, a big bite tube. He has them rigged two different ways. One with an external head, like a VMC half moon jig, and two with an internal head, like a VMC tube jig. The external head has a dramatic up and down fall rate with very little side to side action. This can be very effective at times when they That's want that one. radical drop yeah. speed. You can fish it a little bit faster than an internally weighted tube, but it's not as snag resistant. The internally rigged tube has a lazy gliding motion on its descent. This can sometimes outproduce 10 to one. You're forced to fish it a little bit slower, but it's more snag resistant. Either way, be prepared with both. I am fishing with a BMC spin shot and a big bite shaking squirrel. This is another fish catching machine. The presentation is always at eye level with the fish and teases them into striking. There he goes. Brown. Brown, it's down. Next up is a VMC Carolina rig, rigged with a tube or craw. Sometimes smallmouth want that bait just sitting on the bottom or stitching along. That's when this is at its best. It gets to the bottom in a hurry, but still has that supernatural look to the plastic because there's no weight there, just a hook. The last bait is a VMC darter head and a four inch big bite trick stick. We generally rig it two different ways, standard or wacky. Smallmouth love this stick shape for some reason. I don't know why, but they just do. The profile of the plastic is much different than the other three rigs. So with these four shapes and some weights, you are good to go. One thing to keep in mind, these lures are not only for the post-spawn time frame. They all have a time and place later in the year, but that's a topic for another show. You look coming up. up. Bass? Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. Look at that. Good one. So we've got a number of rods rigged on the deck for this post-spawn smallmouth bite, and you'll notice all of them are spinning rods at this point in time. When you think of finesse fishing, you think of spinning rods. And the rods on the deck are primarily from six foot eight to seven foot in length and we've got different reels on these different length rods and the actions of rods and it's for specific applications. So I'll give you an example here. This happens to be a St. Croix Avidex. This is a 6'9 medium light power extra fast tip and I've got it on a very small size reel. This is a 15 size quantum accuracy reel and it's spooled with suffix Nano braid. This is a great rod for throwing lightweight baits. I've got an eighth ounce on here. I can throw sixteenth ounce baits. And I like the light or the smaller reel. If I'm reeling something slow through the water, it forces me to slow down. By contrast, I've got a 25 size quantum smoke on here spooled with 10 pound. This is suffix 832. And I'm doing a lot of bottom fishing with this. I might be fishing you know, three-eighths of an ounce tube jig on this particular bait, or you know, say an eighth to three-eighths of an ounce. 
So I want a little bit bigger reel to pick up slack when I'm hopping that thing off the bottom. And I want a little more stiffness to the rod. This is a medium power fast action because I'm fishing a bigger bait. So having the right tools on the deck can make a huge difference in how you present baits and it can also make the fish catching process that more fun. Hello, Mr. Brown Bass. Well, this one looks like a muskie tried to get a hold of it. Wait, you see this thing? Hey, it's a nice. It's a big fish, too. Hey, hey, it's been warm, stable weather. These fish are starting yeah. to... Starting to go, won't be long. We'll be cracking them on top water. Yeah. All kinds of, all kinds of stuff. They move pretty quick in these they small do. lakes. Hey, this one's been a little beat up. He's got some recovery to do yet this summer. Pretty soon we'll find him out on some deep pumps, but smallmouth just after the spawn don't have to be hard fish to catch you just need to find the spot on the spot slow down finesse them and horses come in the boat cool nice fish you know most successful businesses that i know have a mission statement and many of them are based around biblical core values. That's how they manage their businesses. Recently, I had a knee issue and I had to go in for some physical therapy. And as soon as I walked in the door, they had their mission statement boldly sitting out there and it really caught my attention. The last sentence said, we have based our business on four core values. We call them the four Fs. Faith, family, fairness, and fun. The word faith leading off the first part of their mission statement really got my attention. I'm gonna take a minute and read you, you LMP, Linder Media Productions, who produces the show that you're watching right now, our mission statement. Number one, to provide our expertise in the industries we choose to serve with electronic images that primarily focus on angling, boating, and outdoor subject matter, utilizing the highest level of workmanship and creative energy and integrity. To maintain maximum financial stability while providing investment value consistent with our clients at the same time developing profitable growth. To provide a work environment that is exciting and challenging while providing an equitable compensation that encourages teamwork, individual growth, job satisfaction, and creative ideas. Last but not least, to be ever vigilant in our actions so that we do not in any way compromise our integrity or reflect negatively on the Christian gospel messages to which we aspire. You know, I know a lot, a lot of businesses, like I said earlier, that build their business around Bible truth as far as management goes and for wisdom in everyday decision making. Hey, I just wanted to share that with you. I thought many of you would enjoy that. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.